Chihuahua, Hanya, Silver Wolf, and Gosh Dang Argentina. The latest live stream reveal all the banners for 1.5 along with a sneak peek of their kits. And today, I'll be breaking down all these characters and help you make a decision on who to save for. The first banner of 1.5 will be Huohua. Some say she's just cute, and some say she's possessed by the dead Foxian spirit of Tingyun. She's an abundance character of the wind element, which is a first in Honkai Star Rail. As we know how important having a healer is for any content, you should be going for her already if you do not have at least two reliable healers that can solo sustain your team. Looking at her kit, her basic attack doesn't do anything special, it's a single target attack, as per usual. Her skill, however, is where it gets interesting. She heals the target ally along with the allies adjacent to the target. She also dispels a debuff from only the targeted ally as well. From what we see in the stream, all three characters are healed the same amount. Her ultimate buffs only her allies and not herself with attack buff and on top of that regenerates energy. We do not know yet how much she can regenerate, but from the live stream, her allies are shown to already almost have full energy. So it is safe to assume that it won't be a team-wide Tengen ultimate. That'd be too busted. Her talent allows her skill to apply sacrifice life, which is indicated by the two orbs here. As long as she has this, her allies will gain a big heal at the short of turn and if they use their ultimate. On top of that, any allies that drop below a certain amount of health gets instantly healed by sacrifice life's effect as well. Every time sacrifice life's heal is activated, it dispels one debuff from the target with a set limit on how many times it can be triggered. You can reset this trigger count by simply using her skill again. This has some similarity to Duocha's auto heal and dispel gimmick. Well, whose technique is pretty unique. You can land a debuff named Horror Struck, which reduces their attack by 25% for two turns. This can't extend to the second wave of a fight, so it's nothing too crazy. From that, we can conclude a few things about Huo Huo. Firstly, she's an insane harmony character. Yeah, that abundance character? No, she's pretty crazy in terms of just harmony anyway. Her kit introduces more than a few harmony-related utility, ranging from energy regen to team-wide attack buffs. Energy regen being one of the rarest elements in the game, with practically only Tingyun being a source of it at the moment, Huo Huo's value as a support is visibly high already. The second conclusion would be that she's also a cracked out healer. With the busted mechanic of automatic healing like Luocha and a stupidly high amount of debuff cleansing, Huo Huo rivals Luocha in terms of healing, losing only by the criteria of needing to spend skill points. She also dispels debuff even better than Luocha, but at the same time, she cannot dispel enemy buffs like Luocha can. Pretty much, they can look eye to eye and say that they are probably the best healers of the entire game. And even regardless of that, with a whole harmony kit to Huo Huo's name, she can easily be considered to be even more valuable than Luocha in terms of increasing damage, which makes her one of the best characters overall. Now that should you pull for her? The usual best answer is yes if you like her. The geek answer to this would depend on your account. If you do not have two solo sustain healers, then without a doubt, you need her. At least with a source of healing, you'll have a way easier time against any content from Swarm to MOC. If your healers consist of weaker ones like Natasha and Bailu, Huo Huo won't be a must pull, but it's still an extremely valuable pull. With these spells and energy regen, she easily outshines any weaker healers, on top of just being able to outheal them anyway. It'll make your gameplay a lot easier. If you already have two of the strongest sustains like, say, Luocha and Fu Shred, Huo Huo becomes non-essential as a healer, but still valuable as a harmony character. In terms of meta talk, Huo Huo is someone that could definitely be on top of tier list with overwhelming value all around, making her a great choice for any account. So me personally would definitely go for Huo Huo no matter what, considering how great she is all around. She also helps out Argentia a bunch, which is someone who'd need high energy. Energy. And well, speaking of his name, let's look at what Argenti does as well. Male Hibako is a physical erudition character, and yeah, it's the first of its kind as well. He seems to be incredible in an AoE setting and pretty much only does one thing, dealing high damage. He has a very normal basic attack, single target, nothing special. His skill attacks all enemies, and surprisingly too, nothing special, that's all it does. However, his ultimate is where the sauce is. When you charge it like a normal ultimate and use it, he attacks all enemies. It does damage, and that's it. But if you charge it and not use it, you can keep on charging it as indicated by the outer white border here. Once that is maxed out as well, his ult becomes enhanced. Upon using this enhanced ultimate, he deals more damage on all enemies, and on top of that, it deals extra damage to a random enemy. The extra damage can be visibly seen from the extra slashes on the rows here. From what I can see, there are 6 extra instances of slashes, so probably 6 extra procs of damage. It's a pretty big increase in total. His talent grants him 1 stack of self-cultivation for every target he hits with any of his abilities.
abilities. This buff increases his crit rate. On top of that, he gains extra energy for every target he hits as well. From what we can see, you can only gain 10 stacks of self-cultivation at the maximum. We do not know how much energy he will obtain from this yet, but it's safe to say Argenti excels against multiple enemies. This technique deals damage to all enemies and grants him extra energy. We do not know of his traits and light cone yet, but from what we see from the stream, we can conclude a few things. The first is that Argenti absolutely needs energy regeneration supports, namely Tingye. Even as he gains extra energy against multiple enemies, he cannot do it consistently. Eventually, he'll beat the mobs and be left against a boss. And that's when he will not be able to regen his energy that well, which is where he would also need a Tingye to help him out. Heck, even Hohua could be great in his team as well. Though getting back to back banner 5 stars is asking for a lot. The second conclusion is Argenti is a great AoE damage dealer, but not a great single target one. Much like most other erudition characters, they want to fight multiple enemies. You can still use them against single target enemies, but their value plummets. Here's a list of pros and cons of Argenti. Overall, he's a very straightforward damage dealer that finally makes sense with the path he's on. Erudition. So he wants to fight AoE enemies, unlike Destruction where they just get to like, do anything they want. Speaking of, if you should pull for him, you know the usual answer, pull if you love him. But taking a deeper look though, it will depend on his multipliers actually. Unlike characters like Jingliu and Isle Dan Heng, Argenti's damage output directly depends on the number of enemies he's facing and the support characters that he's paired with. The more enemies he's pitched against, the better he performs, and if his allies able to charge his energy, the better he performs as well. But do you know that even someone like Jingyu that gets cloud or bunch can zero cycle clear MOC and beat anything in the game with relative ease anyway? Argenti will likely be the same. Not the all-around perfect damage dealer, but gets the job done with the support he needs. Again, unless he has some sky-high multipliers that blows every other hyper carries out the water, I can't really say that you should pull for him over, say, pulling Huo Huo and hope for a better damage dealer in the future. The final new character we're introduced is Hanya, a physical harmony character. Her basic is a basic attack, nothing new. Her skill deals damage to a single target and inflicts the burden state on the enemy. The burden state will only apply to the latest enemy that she targets with her skill, meaning you can't just do this for the whole of enemy's team. Your allies will do increased damage against enemies inflicted with burden. Her talent allows your allies to recover a skill point after a set amount of attack is done against the enemy with burden as well. This effect has a set amount of activation limit, so you'll have to reset a burden state with high your skill or else it be too busted, right? You'll just do it infinitely. Her ultimate increases speed and attack on a single ally. Pretty straightforward and good value. Her technique inflicts a burden on a random enemy, so yeah, nothing too crazy. But from the looks of things though, here are a few conclusions. Firstly, Hanya is incredibly versatile. Her kit involves gaining skill points, something most teams need to function. Her debuff increases her ally's damage. She buffs attack and speed. All of which is something that any team would love to have, which is why she can be lightly used anywhere. Secondly, she's the most unique Harmony character at the moment. Being able to regenerate skill points is something exclusive to Hanya. This also unlocks more potential to characters that need a bunch of skill points like Dill and Chingchue. Overall, Hanya is someone that sounds incredibly valuable, and rather than should you pull for her, it'd be more like, it would be great if you got her, well, since she's a 4 star anyway. Hanya is a no-brainer, if you can get her, it'd be great, but it's not like you're gonna spend your whole pity on a 4 star. Considering how unique and how good she could be, I would actually go for her. Her idols will definitely not hurt at all. Moving on, we have the final contender of your Stellar Jades, Silver Wolf's Rerun. Our brother's sister has been around forever, and we all know how great she can be. I won't go through her skills and such, since I'm sure most of us understand what she does at this point, but to give you an overview, her skill, alt, and talent all apply death shreds, which just so happens to be the highest amount that you can apply in the whole game. Her skill can change the enemy's weakness based on your team's element too. Essentially, you have permanent element advantage. Here are a few pros and counts with her. It's hard to say if you should pull her over the other batter since, just like Hanya, Zorwolf is the only person that can change an enemy's weakness, making both of these characters incredibly unique. The best angle in my opinion would be to go for Zorwolf only if you already have two solo sustains that can do Hohu's job, and that you also have good hyper carries, specifically Sila or E6 Chingchue for a mode of quantum team. And that concludes today's video. I hope I helped you guys with some decisions and I wish you the best of luck for whoever you decide to go for. And that is all. Take Okay.